Hello guys and welcome to all those training to become Super Saiyan. This is Revolution. So this is a pretty controversial topic. It has been pretty much voodoo to talk about GT in relativity to Dragon Ball Super. So I've had this idea how to get GT into Dragon Ball Super effectively for quite a while now. But I have refrained from doing so or at least held it off because of the toxicity surrounding Dragon Ball GT. Now the catalyst for this toxicity is simply because of the abundance of misinformation casting its shadow around that of Dragon Ball GT. There are a few other things as well but thankfully yesterday Geekdom 101 released a video that shed a lot of light on the making of Dragon Ball GT, the processes behind it and Akira Toriyama's actual involvement. Now if you have not seen his very well researched and informed video I encourage you to pause this video and go check out that video. I'll link it in the information section, so go check it out. It's almost a prerequisite in a way to this video because the light he sheds in his video about the making of Dragon Ball GT actually makes a GT Dragon Ball Super collaboration more plausible. So the purpose of this video isn't to face off the GT characters versus the Super characters. It is merely a discussion on if and how they could implement Dragon Ball GT and their characters into Dragon Ball Super effectively without actually hurting the Dragon Ball Super franchise. It's not about which show is better, if you enjoy GT more than you do Super or vice versa, you are entitled to that opinion. If you ask me, I do enjoy Dragon Ball Super more than I did enjoy Dragon Ball GT, but I did enjoy Dragon Ball GT. Just because you enjoy something more doesn't mean that the other thing is bad. For example, I loved the baby saga in Dragon Ball GT, I thought that was excellent and if you somehow managed to fit that into the Dragon Ball Super series, it would strengthen Dragon Ball Super series as a whole. Now obviously you couldn't place it in the Dragon Ball Super timeline because it wouldn't make sense, but maybe you don't have to place it in the actual timeline and I'll get more to that later. This video is also not a video about who would win at Super Saiyan Blue Goku versus Super Saiyan 4 Goku etc etc. Once again if you've been following my videos you'll know that I know that the Dragon Ball Super characters are a lot more powerful than the GT characters. But once again it doesn't mean just because a form is weaker than another that it was a bad idea or was ineffective as a plot device or even as a narrative. Just before I continue with this discussion and volatile topic, I would like to ask anyone new to this channel to please subscribe. I release content on almost a daily basis and I have a very diverse range of content that covers all kinds of Dragon Ball topics. And if you're on Instagram or Twitter, come follow me on these social media networks to get my daily uptake on anything Dragon Ball. So even beyond the voodoo of talking about Dragon Ball GT, even beyond the toxicity that tends to come with it. If we discuss this maturely, there are still a lot of people in the fandom that are very divisive when it comes to Dragon Ball GT. Most people would not want this to happen. However, there are some who still hold fond memories of the characters in GT, not just the ones that crossed over from Dragon Ball Z, but also the ones introduced. Now a good percentage of the people that would not want this to happen simply would not like to see it happen because they want Super to continue in its own right. Dragon Ball GT occurred 10 years after the end of Z. Dragon Ball Super is the continuation of Z but from the Buu Saga to the end of Z. So placing both of them in the same timeline simply would make no sense at all. So much happens in GT that contradicts so many events that occur in Dragon Ball Super. For example, new transformations, new characters, new places, events that have occurred in Dragon Ball Super without any mention of any of them in Dragon Ball GT, even Freezer's and Android 17's comeback literally makes it impossible for GT to ever occur. Even as a writer, there are simply way too many plot holes to fit them both together. You could not literally write around it. Not only is it impossible to fit them both together, Dragon Ball Super is doing well in its own right. It's a very good show. Not a perfect show, but it's a very good show. There are only a very small percentage of fans that would still claim that Dragon Ball GT was even better than that of Dragon Ball Super. You know what? Those guys are entitled to their opinion. It's a subjective matter. Nobody is actually right on this. Now, I watched Dragon Ball GT way back, and I still have some fond memories about it. For me, it was always a show that had some brilliant ideas, some great concepts, but failed to deliver on these ideas effectively or consistently. And then when you add some 
bad ideas along the way, it really ends up just being a completely mixed bag. Like I said, I really enjoyed the baby saga. I wasn't too keen on the Super Android 17 saga, but the Shadow Dragons were also a cool concept. I wasn't in favour of them turning Goku into a kid. I thought that was the major bad idea of the show. However, I liked the Super Saiyan 4 transformation. I didn't think it fit completely in line with the regular Super Saiyan transformations. It probably should have been called Super Saiyan Uzaru or something like that. I know there was a Golden Uzaru, but, but Super Saiyan 4 was the humanoid form of the Golden Uzaru. What I'm trying to say is Super Saiyan 4 didn't feel like a natural progression from Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 2 and 3 are basically just extensions of Super Saiyan 1. Super Saiyan 4 just felt like something else. However, it was an intense form. It was a cool concept. GT had some great fight scenes as well. Goku's fights with General Rildo, Baby and the Shadow Dragons were all epic viewings. What I'm trying to advocate is Dragon Ball GT did do some things right. It wasn't all bad. A major flaw for Dragon Ball GT for me was its ineffectiveness at keeping the rest of the Z Warriors relevant. To the point where in the first 15 episodes of Dragon Ball GT, you just didn't feel like you was watching a continuation of Dragon Ball Z. It felt like something else. And in my humble opinion, they got Vegeta completely wrong. So as you can tell, I'm a bit here and there about Dragon Ball GT. I don't think it should be implemented directly into the Dragon Ball Super timeline. I think that would only ruin Dragon Ball Super, to be honest. But as we get further and further into Dragon Ball Super, as the Dragon Ball cosmology expands in Dragon Ball Super, new avenues actually open up that could see the GT universe, or potentially even a multiverse, work parallel to Dragon Ball Super's multiverse. If DC's Crisis of Infinite Earth has just sprung to your mind, I think you know where I'm going with this. On this channel, we love to talk about how expansive the Dragon Ball cosmology is and what avenues it can take in the future. Since the inception of Dragon Ball Super, we have learned that there isn't just one major god in the universe. There are actually two. There's a Hakai Shin and a Supreme Kai. But they aren't even the top of the hierarchy of gods. Nowhere close. Not only is there only one universe, there are 12 universes, previously 18. And they are ruled over by the Grand Priest and the Omni King, Zeno. Now, Zeno lives in his mansion, if you can call it that, on a giant squid-like creature, which also holds pillars containing all 12 universes in what seems to be a higher dimension. Previously in Dragon Ball Z, there were four timelines. Now in Dragon Ball Super, there are five timelines and future Trunks timeline is actually being destroyed. The other two have been created by Beerus and Whis. And it turns out the most eminent being in this whole verse is affected by time. There's a different Zeno in every different timeline. As gods and angels have the ability to effectively create new timelines, what's to say that a villain of a similar standing to a Hakai Shin or even an angel couldn't do the same? That's not to mention the Super Dragon Balls, which on many occasions have been suggested are limitless. Now we are starting to see Goku approach the level of Hakai Shin in Dragon Ball Super in the Tournament of Power. So if you look beyond the Tournament of Power, it's reasonable to say that we will get her Kaioshin level or Angel level villain sometime soon. After all, there is a Makaioshin realm, so who knows, maybe they could pluck someone from there who is of that standing. So why does all this mean GT could become a thing? Well, obviously Beerus is the catalyst for everything that's happened in Dragon Ball Super. Without Beerus' prophetic dream, Goku simply would never have reached the heights that he has reached now. Whis even tells Vegeta this before he goes to train on Beerus' planet, that if he keeps training the way he is, he is never going to catch up to Beerus. What if a Hakai Shin tier level villain in the future realises that the only way to weaken Goku is to go back in time and stop a certain event happening? And that, of course, is preventing Beerus' prophetic dream. This could either be done from a wish from the Super Dragon Balls, or maybe a future villain could have dream manipulation. But by preventing Beerus from searching for the Super Saiyan God, this would be a major altercation in the history of Dragon Ball. An altercation at a deity level. So you could make an argument that it would create a new timeline. One where Beerus did have the prophetic dream, which would be the continuation of Dragon Ball Super, and one without, where you could implement Dragon Ball GT. 
creating yet another multiverse. Of course, there's still a lot of inconsistencies in Dragon Ball GT, but rather than fit it in the same timeline as Dragon Ball Super, fitting it in a separate timeline, there's easier ways to write around those inconsistencies than having them fit with the events in Dragon Ball Super. Obviously, this villain would be Hikai Shin Angel level, so if he goes to that universe where Beerus didn't have the prophetic dream, you could make an argument that a load of distortions are created throughout that timeline. Now the interesting thing is, as GT started to close, Gogeta vs Omega Shenron's battle at the end was starting to have implications on the universe as a whole. Now, Goku flies off with Shenron at the end. What if this was Beerus' summoning? Or as it was Shenron taking Goku away, what if it was Zalama, the Dragon God? So what exactly is the point of having it run in a parallel universe to Dragon Ball Super's universe? Well, it would allow for a crossover event in the same sort of manner as DC's Infinite Earths. We would see these characters cross over and meet each other, which would be pretty awesome. Time travel in the Dragon Ball verse is prohibited, even amongst the highest of gods. You would believe that eventually there's going to be some sort of consequence to all this. Imagine Dragon Ball's very own Crisis on Infinite Earths, where Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Ultra Instinct Goku had to work together. Now I know the timelines are slightly out because obviously GT is ahead of Dragon Ball Super, but when it comes to a crisis point, you can create all kinds of distortions to make it make sense. You could even make a story where Goku as a Super Saiyan 4 has been training with a high deity, increasing his power and giving him a power hack to be relevant to the Dragon Ball Super characters. Obviously, everything I've just said is completely hypothetical. It's just me creating what-if scenarios. It's up to you if you like that idea or think they could go with another idea or just don't want it to happen at all. I perfectly understand that. I just don't think there's anything wrong with discussing the possibility of it. I just feel like making it a parallel timeline, universe, dimension, whatever, would mean that they can continue the Dragon Ball Super story in its own right without losing GT completely from the franchise. Setting up potential crossover events between the dimensions, further expanding the lore of the Dragon Ball verse, which is personally what I find so endearing. Oh, and it would make Toei a bucket load of money in toy sales. They could even bring out Dragon Ball GT Kai and basically eradicate some of the nonsense. Anyway, guys, I know it sounds like I'm getting carried away. Do not worry. I am sane. I'm level-headed. I'm sure this is not going to happen. I'm 99.9% .9 sure something like this wouldn't happen, but I'd be okay with it. As long as Dragon Ball Super got to continue in its own path, in its own right, comic books have been doing this kind of thing effectively for years. Who's to say that anime can't do it as well? I'm not saying it has to happen. I'm not saying Dragon Ball Super needs it to happen. It's successful in its own right. The question is, would you? And that's what I want to know from you guys in the comment section. Would you want GT to somehow become canon to Dragon Ball Super? Or do you think Super should stay exclusive to itself? There are no right or wrong opinions on this, guys. We're just having a discussion about this, a bit of fun. Keep it polite, keep it civil. Let's stop this negative toxicity that surrounds Dragon Ball GT. By all means, if you think you've got something that would prevent anything like this happening, let me know in the comments section and we can probably discuss it and be constructive about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like my videos, make sure you smash that like button with the Kamehameha. Do not forget to subscribe and remember one very important final message. If you do not stay calm when you are a Golden Uzaru, you will never become a Super Saiyan 4. If you love talking about Dragon Ball on a daily basis, I promise you this channel is for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all the latest content as soon as it's released.